We're here talking about Moonlighter, which is a uh, shop sim slash dungeon crawler. Yep. Uh, so what's the overall premise here? Well, you, you play as a shop owner, as a shopkeeper, that in order to make a living needs to go to some dungeons nearby his town during the night, uh, fight for loot that he can bring back to the shop and sell for gold. Because gold is the only way in the game that you can get stronger and progress. Because the, the, the dream of Will, the, the protagonist of the game, is to become a hero like his customers. So slowly he will work hard to make his way, enter deeper than anybody else in the dungeons and be famous about it. So it's like you split your time between these two things, moonlighting, to eventually pursue your dream. Yeah. And this is a combination of pretty much two different games. It's the dungeon crawling and it's the shop management. So what yeah. was, when did that uh, come into it? Was it always, I want to do both or did it start out as one and then adding in the other? Well, the idea was from the beginning to mix the, the two concepts. Uh, it started as uh, like us making the question of what, what will it be to play as the shopkeeper of the traditional sure. JRPG game or something similar. But from the very beginning, we had games like uh, Rogue Legacy or The Binding of Isaac in mind to add all the roguelike part to it. So we were always trying to make the game so it's, it's two cores, it's two cycles, will uh, synergize and reinforce each other. So when you're joining the dungeon, you're thinking about, okay, is this good for the shop? Is this something I can sell and profit from? And when you are in the town, you are always thinking about, okay, I need gold to craft the stuff that you can use in the dungeon. So we want the two aspects of the game to be very, we, we didn't want it to feel like two games stitched together at all. We want them to feel uh, merged in, in the same thing, yeah. For the art style of the game, what did you look to for influences? Oh, well, like, I would say that a mixture of traditional uh, pixel art, things like the Minish Cap, Zelda the Minish Cap, or modern things like Hyperlight Drifter, maybe, that kind of stuff, so those two things. And regarding the other direction, probably things like Studio Ghibli movies, that sense of place that they achieve, is something we always had in mind. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you have the bosses in here that take you to advance to the next dungeon, yes. and you said there's a story that goes throughout yes. this, even though it's not the core of the game, so. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so it, th there is a narrative to the game and there is an ending to it uh, regarding to this big mysterious gate that nobody has ever opened and that explains why these multidimensional dungeons exist. But basically the people in the game treat the, the dungeons as a source of wealth, as a gold mine, and Will wants to become farther. So the game is not about the narrative, but it's always there. And you can, if you want, you can learn a lot reading things here and there. It's something similar to what the Dark Souls series does. So the, the lore is scattered around. You can read about it if you want. And, but yeah, there, there's a narrative and there's an ending to the game, even if the focus of the game is more on the on the gameplay. Yeah. Do you have a targeted release in mind or schedule? It's gonna be announced very, very, very soon. And yes, it's, it's ready for release in Xbox, PlayStation and PC and a little later on Nintendo Switch. And if people want more information on the game, where can they go? Uh, probably your Twitter is the best place, at uh, Digital Sun, uh, that's the best place to, to stay updated with news of the game. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much.